Do we have fun with each other? No. Break! No. Ah! Are we spontaneous? You think it's the best experience of your life? Of my life? Add, add everything. <sighs> Coming to Jesus, marrying you, and then elephants. Are we even still attracted to each other? Those bikinis we saw. Brian wants me to get one. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> what a journey. What a journey. But we're what on. a journey. Hey everyone, welcome to The Cole Life. It is Friday and it is a good day. Why am I wearing a suit? One of our recent videos, Lexi decided to put on this fancy blazer when I had a casual sweater on. So you guys I decided know that it did not look like that, but whatever. Brian so felt I the type of way. <laughs> that if we're just gonna dress nicely all of a sudden for every video, that I would come correct. Plus, I just got out of a meeting at work and I didn't feel like changing. Um, you tried to step up too, I see. Whatever. I do want to make uh, everyone aware that this is a sponsored video. It's sponsored by Jesus Christ. I'm so, done. Brian, um, what are you saying? Just, <laughs> what is happening? If you could all please like, comment, and subscribe on our video, don't get, I would don't get really them hype. appreciate it. You taking off your jacket, don't get them hyped. Stuck. No one's getting hyped. <laughs> This is something that we talk a lot about in our marriage. I feel that it's honestly one of one of the most important conversations that we have is just through transition, how do we keep our relationship intimate? How do we stay connected? How do we be intentional? Let's just clarify what intimacy means. That is not always physical intimacy. It's not always having sex, but yeah. intimacy relationally, emotionally, yes, physically, but even spiritually, how can we come together as a unit, as, mm -hmm. as a couple and feel one another? But when Lexi and I first got married, there was a lot of people who said, oh, enjoy the honeymoon phase while it lasts. You know, yeah. pre pretty soon you guys will just be like every other couple and it's gonna be boring. And people say that about so many different phases of our lives. Or if you start doing something in the beginning, they're like, oh, don't get used to that. And the same thing with, with having kids. There's so many parents that tell us, enjoy life while it lasts because once kids come, your life is gone and mm -hmm. you'll never feel connected with your spouse or you guys will stop having sex. Or, or you'll just focus on the kids. The kids will be your world. And that's not what we, mm -hmm. that's not what we want. We want to attack all different types of intimacy and what we do. And honestly, there are differences between what we did in the beginning yeah. versus what we do now. We have just as much fun yeah. as we did day one getting married, sometimes more. We are more connected now than we were four and a half years ago. Yeah. And I have no intentions of that changing with kids or with time. So right. number one is just have a mentality where you where you refuse to let other people dictate what your relationship is gonna look like yeah. and what what that standard is. One of the books that I would recommend is The Five Love Languages and talk about what exactly your love language is. What is what do you um, what do you perceive as love? Say nice things about me. <laughs> Affirmation is his. Um, we can go. I mean, I don't want to go over all five of them, but you guys will probably put them down below. But mine is definitely quality. I would say it's equal of quality time quality and physical touch. Time. Yeah. Understanding what that is, so we can understand how each other reads love and gives yeah. love, so we can learn and how to communicate through that method. Yeah. I know she wants quality time and she's not getting it. Well, if we're not connected, that's probably the reason why. Being intentional about those things has helped, is one of the things that's helped us. Yeah, definitely. We've talked about this in the past. Another huge factor of our relationship is we are best friends. Like, yeah. we legitimately just love being around each other. And I think one of the best parts about that is by being best friends, we talk to each other. Developing more than just a romantic connection, but just developing that friendship level yeah. has caused us to be magnetic towards one another. And I think that started in the beginning, yeah, which that's sure. why I would say if you are dating somebody, make sure that you are in a healthy friendship with them. Because if you're not in a healthy friendship, you're gonna you're gonna be used to calling your girl first mm -hmm. or your guy first. He was my best friend before we were even together. So I called him before anybody. One of the main things that we really try to do now is just be intentional. In the beginning of marriage, I felt like it was very easy to just spend time with each other. We had hang nothing out. going on in life. We had nothing each other. going on. <laughs> I mean, you had a job. Um, I oh, was working, yeah. but we would both be home by like what five o'clock. Yeah, five six o'clock. We're home and we're chilling. We're chilling. We're like hanging out. I was like, we want to go out. You want to do something? Now we have a whole life 
where we do so much after work or after we, um, you know, after five, we have to make sure that we're intentional about our time, our quality time, our schedules, and, just, and that's just being organized. We're adulting very hard now in life. So yeah. what it, I mean, we have, if we don't, the, the opportunity cost is if we don't be intentional, unfortunately, the reality is that we will slip and we yeah. will fail to have time together because we didn't schedule it. And then we overextended ourselves or we promise other people we do things with them. We promise we'd mm -hmm. go here or there, the other thing or projects are mounting up. So as much, I don't know if you'd call it as boring as it sounds, scheduling time to be together is a real thing. I think you have to be even more intentional as the years go by. It's just, it is what it is. Unless you have a boring life, that's what it is. And I think that's what people mean when they say, oh, well, after a certain amount of years, then, you know, it just becomes, you know, regular day. Like you don't really care I about refuse. each other. And that's what it is. We refuse to be like that. So that's something that we are constantly trying to work on. We feel it when we're not connected. We feel it when we're not being intentional and we're not taking care of each other. So. And even on the real, like even physically, we, this is for the married folks, not the dating folks. Okay. <laughs> Making sure. All right. Y'all out here acting crazy playing off. <laughs> so. When you're married, you do have to be, again, very intentional with being physical and with coming together. That that has to be a priority. Mm -hmm. That can never be something that just fades away. That does help connecting you. It helps well, emotionally, well, fit literally. Um, but that helps you emotionally connect. It helps you spiritually connect. And it, it can't be something that is just let go. So even with yeah. that, we, we have a, I'll say we have a pulse. It's not like we schedule time to do that, yeah. but we have a pulse on where we're at. Yeah. And, and, and if we're, if we're where we need to be with that. So we, yeah. we constantly talk and we over communicate about those things. And that's one thing I absolutely love about Brian is that he over, I mean, we both over communicate. Did you just brush your shoulders? No. I'm out. No. <laughs> but he, over communicates like I would say this well, if we were to just talk about physical Brian when we first kissed Brian called me the next day asking how the kiss was how we could be better <sighs> what we could do to make it better it doesn't what sound, can be it doesn't sound <laughs> how sexy. can we improve it does not sound sexy whatsoever <laughs> keep in mind we were still best friends so it was like it was like me calling my best friend and yeah. talking about a kiss that I just had with a girl, except my best friend happened to be the girl. So, yeah. you know. Fair. And that's something that we that he's done all of all of the time that I've known him. He's always been very communicative. He's already he's he's always been very um analytical with himself. So, that's what I love about him when it comes to even when oh, go ahead. No, I'll just say because I mean, I don't want to go through a whole marriage. There are literally people who go through an entire marriage still not enjoying each other because they have not talked to each other about what they want out, yeah. of, out of it, right? So I ask her, what do you want? What's good, what's not good, yeah. what can be better? Because I wanna enjoy this marriage and I want yeah. her to enjoy every little bit of it. So I'm gonna over communicate. Same here, same here. We are very open of what we, what we cared for, what we don't like, and that's in any avenue when it comes to just us spending time together. We are even detailed as far as what does spending time together look like? Mm -hmm. Are you on the phone? Are you not on the phone? Will you let me know if you need to be on the phone? Like all of that is very detailed in our life and we hope to continue that. This is one really, really, really big, big uh, aspect of us keeping our, our intimacy or closeness. Um, it's really the fact that you have to care about those little things. When I was just starting the relationship, I was focused on doing like the super big surprises, the really big reveals of like, you know, surprising her and going above and beyond and doing you something that costs some money. I mean, my proposal, the way I asked her out, like those types of things, right? Mm -hmm. But in marriage, I've realized it's really the small things that are the most important. So now, yes, I still do the big things every now and then, but I focus on the, the small little things because that shows that I'm thinking about you not just one or two days a year and putting a lot of thought into it, yeah. but I'm constantly thinking about you. In the beginning of marriage, Brian used to have a reminder that said little things. I did. <laughs> he literally had a reminder. It wasn't a that part of the things. mindset yet. I That's real. And I and I I put it on my calendar of like little things just to think of what could I do 
to just show that I'm thinking of him. And Brian used to have, I don't know if he still has this list. It's still in there. My yeah, phone. he has a list of things that are just little things that I like. And so when he's trying to figure out something little, he'll look on his phone and try to find something for me and just do. It's just certain ways of just thinking about somebody. And even if it's not like what you said, you had to get it to a lifestyle. If it's not in your lifestyle, then doing something like that, it sounds cheesy, but it works putting it in your calendar, reminding yourself that this is something I wanna do, so. And now it becomes, again, a part of who I am so that when I'm out and about just doing things in a daily, if I see something, it'll trigger me thinking of Lexi and I'll go buy it for her. Or I'll go, you know, schedule something for her. I'll, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? It just, it helps me keep her on top of mind. Now we talked about scheduling, right? Making sure that you make time for each other, but a huge part of it is still being spontaneous. <laughs> I remember it's so um, confusing because there's such it's such a balance of being spontaneous and balance and scheduling all at the same time like it's but yeah. but it's important so I remember one time um, I got off, I was in work on a Friday morning and I called her and I was like what are you doing this weekend are we good like do we have any plans she's like no we're free I'm like okay pick somewhere within six hours of driving and we're gonna go there tonight and spend the weekend yeah. and so we had never been to Pittsburgh. We randomly, she selected Pittsburgh. We're like, let's do it. So yeah. we drove to Pittsburgh that night and explored a random city that we'd never been to, found some really cool spots, but just enjoyed time together. It's the spontaneity that keeps things fresh and keeps it yeah. exciting. And every now and then you just gotta throw something different at each other, you know? Yeah. Do it up different. One mm -hmm. of the last and most important things when it comes to intimacy is our spiritual connection with each other and God. Yeah. I feel that we are able to connect on such a deeper level when we are connected with each other spiritually. One of the things that we talked about in premarital counseling was when we were just trying to understand the whole concept of being intentional because it was so easy for us at yeah, the time. Like, why? Yeah, <laughs> and our bishop was telling us that when you are away, it's almost like part of you is experiencing a whole different day. Mm -hmm. Like you are experiencing a totally different day because your spouse is not with you. So being intentional about coming back together and just connecting and just praying for one another, asking God for uh, guidance for that person and just speaking life into that person helps me connect to this person as they're away, if that makes sense. It helps really, um, it helps me feel the person when they're gone. It's, so, it's, it's the concept of receiving revelation that you are truly one. That mm -hmm. and obviously again, that's only for married couples, but you know that you are truly one spirit, one mind, one soul, right? One body. You share everything, and when you see yourselves as truly being one, that's when you feel that connection more than you can just by thinking about it, and more than you can just by doing things together and experiencing things together. It's that revelation of spiritual oneness with each other. Right now, we're in this season where Brian is traveling two to three days a week, and for me. I feel like it's my duty, it's my purpose to just make sure that I'm praying for him. I'm making sure that I'm covering him as his, as his wife and just being mindful and calling and checking in so I can make sure that our spiritual connection is still there. Guys, the principles we're talking about can be applied again more than just marriage, but even dating, learning someone, learning to get to know them, spending time with them, how to develop that relationship and connection. So we yeah. hope this helped and we love you guys being on here watching our channel yeah. we were celebrating 25,000 subscribers a couple videos ago and we're already at 30,000 so i'm not really sure how that happened but thank you for all the yes. new uh, subscribers glad to have you guys a part of it so for anyone who's new watching this video again please like comment subscribe or hit us up on instagram at yes. underscore the coal life underscore and tell us what you think about intimacy we want to know what do you do if you're married or even if you're dating what do you do to keep your dating relationship alive your marriage alive tell us what you think we'll see you soon all right bye bye ryan what um, are you saying i just want to make sure people knew that we're taking too long um, for the intro <laughs> And um, we would <laughs> we would we would appreciate what? it. We, and we would we we. And, what is happening? And we would appreciate it. Okay, start over. No, we're putting that in there.